When we talk about the kinetic theory of particles and using the kinetic theory to explain the behavior of particles in solid, liquids, or gas, we cannot escape the concept of diffusion. Now, diffusion can be defined as the movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until the particles are evenly spread out. Now, when we talk about diffusion, we can only use this concept of diffusion in explaining the behavior of particles in liquids and in gases. It is not possible to talk about the behavior of particles uh, using diffusion to describe the behavior of particles in solids because in solids, these particles are tightly packed together. And so in order to move the solid, you have to move the whole block of the solid as one. That means what you're doing is that you're moving all the particles in that block of solid as one single unit. So you're either rolling them or you're lifting them, whatever have you. But in liquids and in gases, we can use the concept of diffusion in explaining how these particles are moving in different mediums in a liquid medium as well in a gas medium. Let's talk about the movement of particles in a liquid medium. In liquids, liquids, when we dissolve a liquid in another liquid or gas in the liquid, or even something like a crystal, a dissolvable crystal or salt in a liquid, the motion of it moving throughout that container is called dissolving. It is when you take one substance and you put it in a liquid and then that liquid will generally, uh, that substance that you're dissolving will generally spread throughout that body of liquid. So here I have the drawing of a beaker and uh, in the beaker you have water. Okay, and in the water, uh, I'll begin to add drops of red dye, red food color dye. And what you notice is that at the beginning of when you add those drops, when you just add those drops, you begin to see the red color being formed at the, near the surface towards of the uh, surface of the water. And then as you allow time to lapse, as you allow time to pass, what you begin to see is that the water food color, the red colored dye, begins to spread throughout, spread throughout the beaker, and the, maybe the intensity of the color can even get lighter. Eventually, what you end up is a whole container of red colored dye. Now, what is exactly happening to this in when we? Is what is exactly happening to this when we use the particle level to describe the behavior of this food dye dissolving in this water medium, okay? Let's take a look. Here, we have water particles tightly packed, right? But these water particles can still move around each other, uh, breaking and forming their weak interactions between one water particle with another water particle. All right. When we add the food dye into water, what happens is that you get a high concentration of water, uh, food dye around here at the very surface of the water. And as time goes by, you begin to see that the red food color dye particles, red colored dye particles, begin to spread and move throughout the medium of water. All right, so what is happening is that the red particles are sliding past water molecules and the water molecules are sliding up. So there is like a spreading, a slow spreading, a slow moving of, well not really slow, uh, there is a movement of red dyes going from one area to the other side of the container while the water particles are going in the opposite direction in order to uh, go to the place where the red dye particle was at at the very beginning. 
all right? And eventually what you have is an even spread of red food dye particles throughout the medium, throughout water. And this red food dye particles evenly spread out throughout the container of this water beaker will give this red colored solution. So this is the act of dissolving. Again, you can use liquids like this food colored dye, or you can use gas, or you can use solids that dissolve in water, okay? Now let us talk about the movement of particles, gaseous particles, from one end to another end. So in here again, I have three containers. And in this first container, uh, no, no, no three containers. These are the same containers, all right? These three containers are the same. So in one end of that container, I put a bit of gas, maybe a spray of perfume. And what is happening is that as time passes, the perfume particles will spread out in random directions, usually into the direction of lower concentration, all right? So as it spreads around and time passes and it spreads throughout the whole entire room, uh, beaker or room, you can smell that um, perfume particles, right? If you're standing on this end of the room and you're standing on this end of the room and I spread the perfume over here, you can see the perfume particles being spread out. You can't see, you can stand here and wait for it and eventually the perfume particles will reach to you. Now, if I describe this in terms of particles and what's happening to it, is that again, in that room, you, the perfume particles is going to spread from an area of high concentration and spread out over here to an area of low concentration of that perfume particles. Now, it is important to know that even though that this is a beaker, closed container, and if this container is not in a vacuum, there are gas particles interfering with it. Now, these gas particles can be really, really small and that you are not able to notice it, all right? So these gas particles can be everywhere in that beaker, okay? Like what I'm drawing right now. They can be everywhere in that beaker. And as it spreads out, it's going to, the air particles will move past the uh, perfume particles and the perfume particles will also do the same with the gas particles, uh, air particles, and move around. And eventually, the whole room will have, uh, will smell of perfume with all the gas particles surrounding it. So, that is the concept of diffusion.